Karen has done a lot of things for us. Uh, she has a professor, uh, a really cool professor uh, community on Facebook. Um, and sh we can post links there. If, if you're not a member, feel free to go join us, SM Profs mm -hmm. on um, Facebook. Just search that, you'll find it. Um, but Karen's, uh, I've had the privilege of sitting in the audience of multiple presentations from her, specifically talking about um, leveraging and building your personal brand. And so I know that uh, everyone here is going to val get uh, value greatly from her presentation today. Just a little bit of background in case uh, this is your first contact with Karen. Uh, Dr. Karen Freeberg is an associate professor in strategic communications at the University of Louisville, where she teaches, researches, and consults in social media strategy, public relations, uh, and crisis communication. Uh, Karen's also consulted uh, for various companies in areas of social media pedagogy and cert uh, certification programs, uh, such as Facebook Blueprint, HubSpot, uh, just to name a few of, of those cool companies. So Karen, um, without any further ado, I know we're starting a little bit early, but I think that's fine with, with, with everyone. And um, I'm going to leave and turn the time over to you. Well, thank you so much, Trevor. And thank you to you and the rest of the team at StuKent. Uh, this is such a tremendous event. You know, I've been able to follow along and see the great presentations. And so I'm just blown away with the amount of knowledge that I was able to write down. I'm, like, I'm gonna have to incorporate these items in my classes. So thank you again for bringing this, um, this event to so many educators. And so I'm really honored to be part of this. And I really love what you guys are doing to help our students and our, our fellow colleagues, and so it's, again, a true honor to be here. Um, I am really honored to be able to talk about a subject that is near and dear to my heart, and when Trevor and the Stukin team asked me to present during the Stukin Digital Summit for spring, um, I definitely wanted to do something related to personal branding, but kind of take it to the next level, and um, I I'm very passionate about this topic of personal branding, because I think it is one of the areas that we're constantly getting evaluated on, maybe not necessarily formally, you know, from an educator standpoint, but it's important for us to not only realize how we go about in creating a personal brand, but once we have one, what do we do with it? So, um, so for those of you who have seen me present on personal branding, this is just kind of the next step. Um, but if there's any questions, anything that I can do to help to answer any questions about personal branding or anything that I go over, um, I'd be more than happy to um, answer any questions, as well as, it, um, as Trevor kindly mentioned, uh, the social media professors group that we um, have on Facebook. If you are interested in participating and being part of it, um, I am definitely really um, excited to have you join our community. We're 1,500 now strong around the world, so I'm really, really great. And I love talking social too. So um, what I want to do is um, first let's talk about like, you know, everyone seems to basically be talking about personal branding, whether you're looking at industry, if you're looking at students, they all realize that it's not only what they know that is important, but who knows them for certain areas. And so we've seen this emphasis on growing a personal brand. Mark Schaefer has a great book called Known. If you haven't gotten that book, I highly recommend it. It's probably one of the best personal branding books out there. But a lot of us in the education space are realizing, okay, our universities are coming to us with new approaches, new ideas, and saying, okay, we are gonna be evaluated, of course, on research, teaching, and service, but we also are interested in that other element of how known are you in the industry, how known are you in your profession. So we build this personal brand, and so it's like we have our websites, we have our blogs, we have our social media profiles, we do everything online, but now what? Like, I have a personal brand, but now what? So this is actually a question that I've gotten most commonly asked um, during this year, I've had professors and friends of mine that are like, okay, here I have this personal brand. What do I do with it? What, how do I market myself? What are things that I can do to create opportunities for? So, but I wanna kind of first start off talking about um, personal branding in general. So um, personal branding is essentially online and offline exchanges, integrating personality, expertise, and consistency through content and various interactions. So a lot of times when we think about personal branding, we only think about what we present online, where that's one part, but we wanna make sure that that is aligned to what we do offline in our classes, in our presentations, having various conversations, 
uh, coffee meetups, which I, of course I uh, frequently do at conferences to chat. Um, it's important for us to be consistent across the board um, with our personal brand and making sure that everything is aligned to what we want to share. So if you meet someone online, then you meet them in person. There's no, you know, there's no break. You know, you're not meeting two different people. So um, everyone that's been presenting here today, I've had a chance to meet, and you, you know, especially with Karen Sutherland, who I actually spent my time in Australia last year for my sabbatical. You meet her, and she's exactly the same. She's wonderful. Same with Elaine. She's exactly how she is online. So these are two individuals that are dear friends of mine that I know what I see online, what I see in person are exactly the same. So that's it. Um, a key element for personal branding. Now, when we're looking at our personal brand, we have to kind of look at um, our branding network. So when I look at my personal brand as a professor and I tell my students when what I do in the classroom is just one element of my personal brand, but I have to kind of look at what's my network, what are the other touch points that I'm able to create. So. You have your social digital presence, which a lot of people focus on. They focus on making sure that everything is consistent. They have their username, they have their um, digital portfolio, everything. But when we have to kind of look at our network, it's a lot larger than that. Um, so we have our friends, families, and colleagues in our community amongst our students. Like each of those different groups help amplify, help possibly bring forth new opportunities for us for our personal brand. So what we have to think about are the various touch points that we are utilizing here to best amplify our work. But we're also doing a lot of things in related to showcasing our knowledge and expertise. And this is something that in the social and digital space, we have a wealth of information. We have a wealth of knowledge, expertise, and experience that we need to kind of showcase and let others in the industry know. And this has been something that I've tried to articulate, especially at the industry conferences, saying, look, like we have individuals who are consulting on the side. You guys learned how uh, Karen was incorporating real clients into her class. And so she's also a consultant. So she is walking the walk and talking the talk as well. Um, but it's important for us to be able to showcase that one aspect of what we're trying to do as a professor is in the classroom, but sometimes we get kind of siloed in that piece. Everyone thinks, well, professors only teach and live in our offices and talk theory. And so if you've ever been to my office, you'd probably say, well, no, that's not true. <laughs> but we need to kind of be able to showcase our research, our presentations, what we were able to do in the individuals, you know, and then I also list some brand collaborations. The part of so Trevor mentioned, I've had a chance to work with Adobe, Facebook Blueprint, HubSpot, Hootsuite, um, and then of course Cam Lyons with their Educator Summit. All of these opportunities did not come from my research. It did not come from the typical standing points of what you would see an educator being evaluated on. It was for what I was able to do in terms of to making opportunities based on my personal brand. So these opportunities came from what I was able to do, what I was able to get. So I want to kind of share some of those opportunities with you guys. And so I have seven ways to leverage your personal brand to create opportunities. And so each of you guys can utilize these strategies to foster relationships. And again, you know, this is not necessarily going to happen overnight, but a little bit every day, you could possibly meet some individuals that could be game changers for you. You might find someone that says, wow, like I really want to work for, you know, a, a collaborative partnership with Adobe or I want to work with Starbucks, which I'm still working on. I think they need to sponsor us as a professor group and community. We drink a lot of coffee. So I'm going to go over some of these points to kind of show you how you can utilize the work that you've done with your personal brand to amplify your work and to make some of these opportunities happen. So the first one I think is really coming down to the basics of networking. So a lot of times we see people promote themselves, go in for the hard sells, like, okay, I want to make this opportunity for myself. I want to get this guest speaker. I want to make sure that these people know who I am. So there's a lot of pushing out content that I see on social. Um, a lot of people promote and sell their brands, but it's not about what you have in your personal brand, but it's how you utilize it. So I would not necessarily consider myself to be the most influential person on social. Um, there's a lot more people that are there. But what I've tried to do is work with what I have, 
work with the angle that I can basically utilize and make connections that are unique. Um, so it really comes down to doing a self-reflection, self-audit of yourself. And we do this each and every class for whether it's social media or digital. We have students do an audit of a company, kind of looking at the backgrounds, kind of critically looking at uh, what are some opportunities, what are some challenges, what are things that we can do. And um, sometimes I forget, you know, I, I mean, even for myself as a professor, sometimes I forget that we're teaching our students how to do these tools, but sometimes we have to listen to our own best advice. And so we have to basically look at what we can do to network more effectively, reach out to people that could potentially turn into a great opportunity. Um, and I think that you want to look at your contacts in the industry authentically. So a lot of times I've seen a few people that look at where, like if you want to get connected with Disney, they look at, okay, who's the VP of Disney marketing? And they go automatically say, okay, I want to work with you. That's the hard sell approach. But what you want to do is cultivate a soft sell approach. And you can say, hey, I'm a professor, I'm studying this, keep up the great work. And so if you're kind of interacting with those individuals over a period of time, then you're able to authentically grow that partnership and grow that network. So it's not just focusing on their roles and positions. So there's a lot of people that are off course on online and I view Twitter as being like the major networking platform of opportunity. And so this is an opportunity for you to foster new relationships because a lot of people will look at your bio and kind of say, okay, who is this professor? Who is this person? Why are they contacting me? But if you do it in a way that, that authentically speaks to them saying, look, I'm, I'm teaching in this subject, I'm teaching, you know, the work that you're doing to my students, that's an angle that you can basically utilize to motivate and to make additional touch points. So not everyone is going to be um, listening so there's going to be some people that may never respond to you but there's going to be a few people that will that will be like wow this is really cool I want to definitely talk to you these are some things I'm seeing in the industry so you're able to foster strong connections so what you want to do is kind of think about who do you want to network for yourself that you're really generally interested in working with and that you'd be willing to share your expertise and to see what kind of win-win situation you can come forward. And you'd be surprised with how many people in the industry want to hear from professors, but they just don't know that we're here. So it's getting better. They're getting more, more people, more brands, more platforms, you know, are getting more comfortable and approachable with uh, professors who are on social, but they just need to know that we're here. And so I think for one call to action that I have for everyone is to use your voice and let people know you're here, you're there, you have students, this is what you're teaching, this is what you're doing in your classes, here's what you're doing on the side, and tell your story and really advocate for yourself personally, because your university may not necessarily do so, so you have to take action to do it. So that's one way. Um, um, the other thing too is working with brands and teams. And I, I always tell my students that um, being aware that there's always someone behind the um, brand that is tweeting, interacting. And so that's kind of the thing that I've, I've kind of done too, is like uh, there's a few brands that I think have been very good in terms of their social listening uh, conversations. And I wanted to share an example that actually happened earlier this year to kind of demonstrate how with one tweet, you're able to connect with a variety of different brands. So um, there was a conversation that arised on Twitter. There was a marketer um, that kind of was talking about how social media managers today don't really know what to do when they're talking about social media and social listening. They're not doing an effective job. And personally, for me, with my personal brand, I'm not someone that jumps into an argument, you know, that is contrary to what's going on and what's being talked about. But this case really resonated with me because I'm like, you know, I, I know some of these brand managers, some of these brands that um, are getting slammed, um, they're doing great work. They don't deserve to be slammed. So I jumped in and said, I disagree. Uh, and I highlighted four brands, Stakeum, Applegate, Aviation Gin, and Cinnaba. I mentioned those four just because they've been very active. Like whenever I've tweeted at them, whenever I've seen my students tweet at them, they respond immediately. So I'm like, hey, th these brands are great. Um, and so all of these brands came on board. They said, yeah, like the, we really appreciate this, you know, the kind words. We really appreciate what's going on um, and you advocating for us. But that one tweet led to four great new brand connections, great new opportunities where I'm able to foster a strong relationship with the brand managers that then, again, another extension, another networking opportunity where we're talking about, you know, other possible opportunities that I can bring them into my classes and somehow and, you know, interacting, networking with, you know, my students. And so by you 
putting forth, you know, and saying, hey, look, this is my viewpoint. This is, you know, who I'm advocating by letting some brands know that, like, they're listening. The individuals behind the brands are listening and you're able to foster new relationships. So there's actually one brand that's listed here that I'm actually working on seeing if they can actually come to campus, you know, to speak to my students. So you just never know who's listening and what opportunities may arise. And you'd be surprised um, what could happen. And remember, kindness doesn't cost anything. I'll mention that a little bit. You just never know who, you know, is listening and what opportunities might be arise. Um, so again, tying in your personal brand to create win-win situations. And so I think the thing that we have to do is we talked a lot about metrics. We talked about ROI, you know, and KPIs with our campaigns, but we kind of forget to do that ourselves, you know, to kind of like, once we have our brand, we have our own analytics. We can see what we're doing on Instagram. We see what we're doing on Twitter. We can see our website hits through Google analytics. But what we have to do is kind of show people if we want to collaborate individually as an educator, show our value and our engagement. So connect the why and why you're engaging. So with Cinnabon, for example, I love what they're doing on social. They're rocking it. Um, they're amazing. But you have to kind of ask yourself the why question and why you're engaging with them. Are you really a fan? Like, are you really someone that is an avid fan of their products or you just want free stuff? Like, so if it's the second kind, you don't necessarily want to do that. But do you use your products and do you talk about them in your research and teaching? So for me with Cinnabon, I'm, I answered all three. I'm like, yes, I'm a fan of their uh, Cinnabons and their coffee. They make a good cup of coffee. Um, I, I use their products, mostly coffee, um, but for a treat, I get their Cinnabons. And I talk to them all about our time, you know, about social listening, social care, and you're providing value with us. And so they're always looking at opportunities, you know, to, you know, interact and formulate new relationships. And so this is an, another opportunity for us as educators to bring brands into the conversation because we're a new group for them. You know, these are individuals who are creating content for a brand that we can say, hey, we're covering you guys in our classes. And so you're able to provide value there. So again, you never know what might happen. And so I have this picture here. Um, this was for Valentine's Day. Um, Cinnabon said they were sending me something for Valentine's Day. And I'm like, okay, what, what's going on here? And they sent me a heart-shaped uh, mini bun package, which of course, you know, I had to try because research, obviously, you know, with the products. But it kind of showed their appreciation. It showed their value that they really were like, yeah, we really connect this opportunity. So of course I shared it, but it, it was something that, again, that win-win opportunity where I was able to share that with my students and share that personal story and share that with other colleagues. And so it really is another additional touch point, more brain awareness, more elements that really kind of show you what you could do possibly with your personal brand. Um, and align passion areas of interest. And so this is something where um, if you're passionate about a certain subject, there may be organizations, there may be groups, there may be that allow you to showcase that. But in some cases, you'd be surprised um, there may not necessarily be a community or group. And this was something that with the social media professors group three years ago that I ran into. Um, if you don't see it being done, then sometimes you have to do it yourself. And um, to be able to create a community to make an impact. And this is something that I did for social media professors group. So this actually came from a research study. I actually was interviewing a few professors who were teaching social media. And at this time in 2016, there were a lot of professors who said, you know what, I really don't have one place where I can share ideas, talk to other professors who are doing the same thing. And um, I wish there was one place where we could all talk about um, what needs to be done in our field. And so the light bulb went off and I'm like, oh my gosh, this needs to happen. And so with Facebook groups, we were able to do that. Um, and so sometimes you're able to align your passion areas into making an impact. And with that community, you're able to foster, again, more opportunities. So fast forward a few years, we had a chance to work with um, Facebook Blueprint. So Facebook Blueprint, um, you know, again, they were launching a new digital marketing associates program and they were testing only at a few schools. But I remember talking to them actually at uh, the Midwest Digital Marketing Conference in St. Louis. And I said, look, like there's a huge community here where I think you would be able to provide a lot of value to, but also get a lot of value in return because you're gonna get a diverse group of schools represented from community college, high school, four year graduate programs, online programs. So it's a really win-win situation, but there's other programs and other groups that are available. So if you're interested in sports communication, um, there's a sports um, professors group, there are digital marketing professor groups, there's a student run agency 
professor group on Facebook. So depending on your area of expertise, there's a community there. So, but if there isn't, then that is where you can create one yourself, which is I think really, really awesome. And then formulating experiences too. So I think that is something too that um, being able to kind of utilize your personal brand to create experiences for your students, for your colleagues, or even in the industry. Um, and see if there's a way for you to create some sort of event that kind of showcases and again amplifies the area of interest that you're interested in with your and aligned with your with your personal brand. So this could be anything from guest lectures, from podcasts, meetings, panels, but um, it could also be big events as well. So um, I had a chance last year to work on the launch, the official launch of the Can Lions Educator Summit because I went to Can Lions in Can France, and there really wasn't any educator focused event. And that has been an area that I'm personally passionate about. And I remember went going online, writing a blog saying, I think we really need to have this. This would be great to have at Cam Lines. And then um, I went to the event in 2017 and you know, a few days later after I wrote that post, it was kind of like, okay, we need to do this. I'm like, all right, cool. So we're in our second year. Um, we're gonna have it again this summer. But it, it kind of shows you that it's possible. Like if you really are passionate about your area, you need to let people know that you are passionate and kind of align your passion areas to perhaps an organization, a brand, um, a group of individuals. And so you're basically having to write a pitch for why this is the case. But you wanna basically justify that pitch with some evidence, with some work, some research to be able to amplify that. So that is something to always keep in mind when um, you're looking at formulating experiences. Um, and then I think the other thing too is being a social connector. Um, and I think this is something we need to work on, I think as a profession, because I know when I first started teaching social media back in the day, um, I had a lot of doors slammed in my face just because people were like, well, it's my ideas, my class, this is what I'm gonna do, you go and find some other things. But it's important for us to create opportunities to help others make connections because we can't all do this by ourselves. Um, we are always usually utilizing you know, a group of individuals a uh, community like StuCan has uh, provided us to help each other out. And so you never know what type of opportunities you can gather by helping other people, by making these connections. So back to where I was with Facebook, I invited them to be part of the social media professors community. So I invited them saying, hey, here's a wealth of you know group members who are very passionate about what they can do to bring forth the latest innovations into their classes. And it was only until a few months later that they said, you know what, we really appreciate you reaching out to us and inviting us to be part of this community, Karen. We want to actually work with you on this certification. So that allowed me to get a consulting opportunity with Facebook Blueprint. Um, there was something that I didn't expect. I was like, wow, I'm getting you know an opportunity to work on this. But again, we're all on part of the same team here. We all are here to help each other out. And so you introduce yourself in a variety of ways, like based on your research interests, you can collaborate, you can pitch your research, you know, to possible, you know, opportunities to, you know, work and collaborate with a brand. This is what a few, a few colleagues of mine did, you know, with Hootsuite. We did a Hootsuite certification study where we said, hey, look, can we collaborate with you on this research study? We're going to be doing the research, but we would love to get your insights on what we can do, you know, to help improve, you know, the certification, you know, you being used in the classroom, get, gain more awareness in the education industry experience. Etc. So there's a lot of opportunities here if you are willing to become a social connector and connect people with each other. So looking at you know your community and if someone says, hey, I'm looking for someone to help me out with Google Analytics, introduce them maybe to another business, introduce them to a keynote speaker on that subject, and say, look, like you guys can definitely connect. And so I've had a chance to connect a good friend of mine, Dennis Yu, to a few other professors who actually have been able to bring him on campus. And just you never know, you know, again where that will that you know opportunity will come up in the future so people may be able to help you as well so again you know we're all on the same page here we are here to will you know help each other out so i think that that's really important for us to keep in mind when we're kind of moving forward in this industry is kind of you know utilizing our personal brand for personal good and for the good of the audiences and the community that we're working with so i think it's also important to with opportunities, if you have social proof and evidence. So one of the things that I realized a few years ago when I was up going up for tenure at the University of Louisville is I really had to educate my colleagues in my tenure package about 
all the stuff I was saving from blogs, from webinars, from tweets. And I did include a tweet that when the, um, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock mentioned me, and this is going to be something that I'm going to be probably mentioning in my uh, full professor tenure package in a while. Um, you don't want to tell people you have a personal brand, you want to show it. And so social proof is basically evidence that, you know, of mentions on social, follows um, content that mentions you and kind of advocates your personal brand. Um, this social proof, again, could lead to, again, more opportunities. And so if you're able to show substantial evidence, you are able to build trust. People will be like, wow, this is a different factor. This is a different, you know, angle that we haven't heard from you. This is interesting. And so people like the unique aspects of evidence, stories, et cetera. So I share this, um, screenshot with Ryan Reynolds. So this actually happened, um, in December, I remember I was actually finishing my final grades for my classes at the University of Louisville. I remember I was sitting in my living room and I get this notification on my phone that Ryan Reynolds follows me, is now following me on Twitter. And I remember looking at this, I'm like, oh, all right. He, you know, this is another bot that, you know, basically <laughs> is impersonating him, poor guy. And so when I looked though at the account, it had the verified check number. And so again, I told my students I freaked out, but I <laughs> was very excited about that. But then with students and with other professionals so sometimes we have a struggle like in our profession you know with as educators to talk about the significance of our research to talk us to the significance about the work we're doing you know academically um but we need to feel be able to communicate the impact in another way and so with this when i shared this and even with my classes, you know, this term and then even under industry professionals, I've been to a few events here locally. And the first thing that everyone talks about is, wow, Karen Ryan Reynolds follows these on Twitter. That is so cool. And so forget everything that I've done before <laughs> with my personal brand, with teaching, research, um, books or anything like that. That was the only thing. So I'm like, cool, awesome. But this is, again, another unique opportunity because this is someone that you, you know, again, celebrity status, like again, the power that you're able to connect with someone online. And I'm not saying that, you know, that everyone has to click connect with a celebrity, but I'm saying what Ryan Reynolds is doing with his team at Aviation Gen are very strategic because they're finding out there's a whole community of us that we're all talking about the work with the Peloton commercial. We're all talking about what he did for Leap Day. And they're interested, they're open to conversation. So when you're looking at individuals, again, back to my first point with networking, if you're able to see there's individuals in very um, significant places in their career, in, in their voice in the community, they're like, wow, yeah, we wanna talk to you know these individuals, that's an opening. So I've actually had a lot of really good conversations back and forth and I've let Brian and his team know at Aviation Gin, you must follow them. They're amazing. They're doing awesome work um, that, you know, I'm doing this. Like I'm talking about their work in class. I actually joked that um, I call my social media class the Ryan Reynolds class because pretty much I talk about it, their work <laughs> pretty much on a regular basis. But this kind of shows again another connection. So that could lead to who knows what, you know, um, opportunities. And so I've had a few friends that have said, oh, yeah, you know, DM Ryan this. And I'm like, I'm not, you know, we're connected on Twitter, but we're not at that level yet. So, but no, I mean, I've been really impressed with what he's been able to do um, for the community. Um, he's engaging, you know, on social with his fans. He's listening. So same thing with his team. They get it. So, you know, I would definitely make sure to follow him and you never know. Some of you guys might have him for a guest speaker. That would be definitely an opportunity to amplify your personal brand. Um, and I think that's the other thing too, the driving content, the spark impact. Um, and really kind of looking at you have your personal brand, you have your website, you have your Twitter, etc. You want to make sure that your content that you have here showcases your expertise in different forms. So that's one of the trouble that we have right now as educators is that our university is telling us, well, you know, in order to get tenure, the only, you know, outlets that you're able to kind of showcase your expertise in research is published academic papers. Well, that's all great and fine and good, but you want to diversify your content. So I've been very fortunate at the University of Louisville where I have a new president that is kind of open to those conversations. She wants us to be active in these various um, settings like, you know, the Digital Summit and to publish other forms that are tying into industry standards. So I have everything from books, articles, ebooks, webinars, guest lectures, videos. So what you want to do is kind of diversify your content stream to be able to spark content because you are only going to get one thing 
across. You're able to get one format, you know, to showcase your expertise in a research article. But if you were able to do a video talking and presenting your research to be able to be shared across social channels, you're able to present your research to a wider audience. You're able to be able to kind of showcase the human side of your personal brand, but you're also maybe, you know, also getting the content to be accessible to other audiences as well beyond just the academic journal. So you want to kind of think strategically on how you can go about it doing this. So I think that's something that is um, really important. Um, and then my last, you know, advice is might be a little scary to some whenever I've talked to fellow colleagues who are, on, you know, kind of starting out in the academic career as a professor. I tell them zig where everyone zags and they're like, you mean I have to do something completely different from everyone else? And I say, yes. Um, what you want to do again is an audit of yourself, you know, as a professor, where do you want to do, you know, see yourself, how would you compare yourself with other professors? So again, do a competitive analysis, you know, saying, okay, here are some professors that I looked up to, what are they doing well? What are things that I have that they don't, et cetera. And identifying the gaps that are there that you have the advantage. So I do this myself, you know, I kind of view myself as if I were a client and say, okay, what advice would I go? And what I've tried to do is if I see everyone going right, I pretty much go left, you know, not just, you know, like slightly left, but I go pretty much left. <laughs> and so what you want to do is stand out. Um, what you want to do is not necessarily do what everyone else is going to do. You want to stand out in some capacity doing something different. So when I started out teaching research in social media was not really a thing, you know, so I thought, okay, this is an opportunity to set the tone. This is something that I could do to kind of set myself apart. And what I've tried to do is continue on that trajectory, do things that I do. And, you know, it could be scary. It could be intimidating to kind of look at this, but I can assure you that it is a risk. Absolutely. But the payoffs are just tremendous. Like if I went the same route that everyone else was doing going in my cohort when I ended my PhD, I probably would not be where I'm at right now. And be aware too that if you are going this direction with your career, you know, and kind of doing things off, you know, because there is a community who are there to support you. So I know like, you know, Karen's doing amazing things, innovating, you know, she's doing things in Australia that honestly not many professors are doing it around the world so she's an example kind of showing what she can do and we're all here to help and achieve that way so consider what you have to offer in terms of insights expertise connections and value that you can have and so these connections that i've had with brands i made a point with them that they're not the typical brand that educators interact with i mean with facebook blueprint this was their first opportunity to really work with educators you know, to collaborate. So that's an opportunity. Adobe, you know, it has an influencer program, an educator program, but they mostly have targeted either marketing professionals for their marketing cloud or in their education team, they focus primarily on K through 12, not higher ed. So again, you're kind of seeing that unique angle here. So, and then Cam Lines didn't really have an educator summit. So what you want to do is identify those gaps in your field. If there's a company or brand that you, or organization or community that you want to reach, identify those and say, I can help address this gap. And so that's something to keep in mind. Um, again, give versus take. So that was something too, when everyone was basically taking content, but not really meant like mentoring or giving back, I went the opposite because of what I was able to experience. So you want to always give to build that reputation, that community that you are someone that is giving back to the community. So that helps amplify your personal brand, give you again, more opportunities. Um, instead of preaching to people about what you're doing, mentor, take people under your wing, help them along with this journey, help them, you know, understand like it's okay to take risks. Here's the strategies and things that I did when I went, you know, through the process. So there's a lot of mentorships in our community from what, you know, Stukin has created here with, you know, their uh, professor community, what SM Plus has done. So that's the key thing. But the key thing here is to experiment. Um, there are things that I've tried over the years that have not necessarily worked, um, but I've learned through each and every one of those experiences to help me improve on what I'm doing and to improve on the opportunity. So now I kind of have an idea of the pitches that I have to make, the strategies I have to do. So every experience teaches you something. 
that will help you amplify your, your overall brand. And so I think the other thing too is invest in the long game. You know, it takes time. It, it absolutely takes time to be able to foster these relationships a little bit every day. But if you are able to consistently offer consistent, reliable content in a real authentic manner, like if you really truly want to network with someone, if you really want to collaborate with someone and you have the justification and rationale for why, it may take a couple of times, but you're able to build those relationships that they could foster into a wonderful opportunity. And so it just takes time, a little bit investment, but again, um, I definitely want to reassure you guys, if you guys are interested in any of the things that I've talked about, I'm here to help in any way I can. So I'm going to give you guys my email address and open it up to um, questions and answers. Um, but again, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. I'm at just Kay Freeberg, um, which is located at the end of the um, slides here, but I'm also available through email. And um, this is something that I'm very passionate about, and I look forward to you know, answering any questions you guys have. Hey, we're good. Yeah, we're here. Okay, Karen, thank you so much. So, uh, like Karen said, hey, just chime in if you have questions, um, and, and if you want to pick Karen's brain a little bit deeper. Um, first question we have for those of us, or yeah, for those of us who may be working in institutions where the leads may be a little more traditional, what advice do you have to reach out to change the reception of diversified? portfolio, especially for a 10-year committee, committee? That's a great question. I'm really glad that you asked that, Elaine. Um, I had to do that for my pre-tenure uh, case. Um, I actually had to explain to the tenure committee what Twitter was and what a hashtag was and why I was spending so much time on this platform. <laughs> So I, it, it's difficult, but I would say right now where universities are at, um, I think I think everyone's kind of reading their writing on the wall. Um, I think they're understanding where social media is coming first. So this is something where if you are facing a, t a specific case where you're coming in from a very traditional community background for tenure, they're looking at research articles, they're looking at teaching, what you have to look at um, and be able to report is what were the results that you got based on what you were doing. And that could tie into um, where your students have gotten internships based on the experiences and teachings that you were able to articulate, you know, from what you were doing online, uh, what professional opportunities you were able to get for your students based on what you were doing online. So one of the things that I did in my pre-tenure process, because I had a few students that got jobs in social because of what they were doing on social, I had students, you know, I had collected students' emails, you know, saying, I'm really glad that, you know, you taught me this because I was able to get a job at Team USA or the Dallas Mavericks. And it kind of showed the committee saying, yes, I had a purpose in mind for teaching these students these skills that resulted in basically them getting jobs, ultimately becoming successful alumni, possibly future donors, you know, all that kind of stuff. So what you have to do is educate your, um, your committee educate you know them about the impact you're making so right now I, I i actually collected a lot of tweets and i when i was going up for tenure just a few years ago i had a lot of professor colleagues of mine saying you know no don't include your tweets don't include blog posts but my argument is that i actually had a section and i'd be happy to share this with you elena and other ones like i actually justified why i was doing this because i said okay here's what i was able to get in the years that i've been teaching social here's where my students ended up Here's the research studies that I, and collaborations I got because of people that I interacted with on social because of what I was doing, you know, online. But also, here are the brand collaborations that I've had a chance to work with to bring again more brand awareness for the University of Louisville to make opportunities for in the industry and making a name for myself and the university in that particular area. So you just don't need you don't need to go you know, too long with the justification, but you need to definitely realize you're gonna probably need to educate and talk about the impact you're making on social and how that drives the success you're having in the classroom, but also in other aspects you're gonna be evaluated on. Do you have, <clears throat> To which brands you choose to align yourself with, given like your your occupation? 
Yeah. Well, I would say one that like I'm hoping for is coffee. I mean, that's a natural connection, but I haven't had any luck there. So if anybody has connections to a coffee company, I am definitely all ears. So that's, that's one of my brands that I'm still working on new decade, new year. Um, but yeah, I, I actually, yeah, with the brands that I align myself with is I really do look at their culture and I look one first off is if, am I using their products? So I use Adobe products in my classes all over the place in different capacities. And so for me, that was a natural connection and I love what they are doing for digital literacy and really kind of putting forth the investment on that. That was really impressive. Uh, Hootsuite was actually the very first brand that I worked with um, when they came out with their certification. Um, they were the first one that really kind of was like, yeah, we want to work with professors. We want to get your insight. So I'm very grateful for what they were able to do. Um, Facebook Blueprint, you know, it's the first platform of the ones that you look at that was open to talking with professors and educators like beyond Twitter, beyond LinkedIn, Pinterest, YouTube. It, for me, that was like a testament. So I actually thank the Facebook Blueprint team. I'm like, oh, this is great. Like for us as who are teaching, you know, social media, having FaceTime or having the channel to talk with individuals who are working in the platform is huge. And we all use, you know, Facebook. We all use um, their tools. Um, but yeah, Cam Lyons too, I felt, you know, aligning with them. They're kind of the Oscars for our field. And um, being able to talk to them about the importance of education where traditionally, um, I think that's kind of where a lot of industry conferences have, have interesting conferences have been. They really haven't been receptive to um, educators and students. Um, but Cam Lyons over the years has been saying, no, like this is the future generation that we're working with. And we have to work with, you know, this audience to help foster, you know, more creativity in our field. So what I try to do is look at opportunities of alignment. And so um, there's brands that, that I work with that I'm like, yeah, this is absolutely great. But um, with the brands that I am not working with is just because I, I haven't seen yet um, their commitment to education, commitment to bridging the gap between academia and industry, but I'm open and I've had a chance to work with HubSpot, you know, and um, others. And so it's been a lot of fun. So that's kind of where I'm looking at. So I do kind of stay in the kind of tech side of things. I have expanded. Um, I did a few things with Adidas, which was pretty cool. Um, but because they're in Adidas, um, we're at the University of Louisville, we're actually in Adidas campus. So I know some of the members of their team. And so that was a kind of cool partnership. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of, you know, look at that. So I'm open to collaborations, but I really, first and foremost, I want to basically either use the product that they're using or service and really feel that they're moving in the right direction in terms of the commitment to bridging the gaps between education and um, industry. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Thank you. So it, in your pursuit of doing this, um, if you could name, if you could just specify like your, your three favorite uh, platforms or tools that you use, find value, maybe they're mobile, like things that that allow you to take the available time that you have and really, uh, you know, utilize that time efficiently to create stuff on the fly. Um, yeah, as it seems like you know that needs to happen when you're when you're working your personal brand. What are some of those things that you use? Yeah, no, I, I, I really like that question. I would say like in terms of creating content, if anyone is like me who is graphically or artistically challenged, I can draw a stick figure. Um, I love tools that allow me to do that. So I use Adobe Spark a lot. Uh, Adobe Spark has three different free tools. Um, you can create videos, images, and then a responsive page. Um, I use that as well as Canva a lot of times, like for my blog images, for social media announcements that I do for my classes. So those are two tools that I really uh, like to use. Um, I would say that one tool that I have actually used to kind of validate the impact that I've had or other educators uh, has been Clear, actually. So Clear is an influencer tool that I have access to. Um, and so what I've done is I've talked to a few brands that are feeling, you know, they look at influencers in the marketing space and they're like, oh, this person's very influential, blah, blah, blah. And so what I've done is I look at what they're doing on their social and I run a report on them 
And then I report on myself. And that's when I share to these brands saying, you know, actually there's a few of us on the education space that have higher engagement and better reach than some of these people that you work with. So I use that. I, I love using data to make a point across. And so um, Claire is a great one. And so they've actually partnered with Melwater um, as part of their Sysmos uh, collaboration. But I think that's something too to realize is that we have a lot of, as educators, we have more influence than we think we do. Um, and so sometimes it's about educating, you know, possible collaboration. So I use, yeah, I use Clear basically to kind of see where I'm at, you know, what I'm located in the digital social space. But then in terms of creating content, Canva, Adobe, um, Spark are great. But then I've really been trying to up my game in Instagram stories. So on the fly, I use an app called Mojo, M-O-J-O. Um, -O. And so this for Instagram stories, again, I'm graphically challenged. So this has great templates for me to make my Instagram you know, stories look all pretty. So I use that for Cam Lions on the go. And it was, again, able to amplify their story before the Educator Summit. Okay, so if you got you've got one platform, it's the only platform that uh, you can use to build your social, uh, to build your personal brand. Where are you going? Uh, I, I gotta go with Twitter. I am taking Twitter all the day. I mean, it's been a place where I've been able to connect with so many people and made some really good friendships. And all of the opportunities that I've had have come through Twitter. So it's one of the platforms everyone thinks is dying or it's the worst place ever, but I, I really love it. It's, um, again, it's been my Rolodex uh, for contacts. People have been able to kind of see and connect with me, you know, in other places. And so um, it would be, you know, awesome, you know, just to kind of, you know, be there, you know? And so I, I'm on all the other platforms, but I feel Twitter is my, my true home for social media platforms. Awesome. Uh, we had, uh, I, you can see that from Roger. I think that might be a good list that we'll reach out and try to grab from you, Karen. And then um, just a, a list of all the platforms and tools that you use. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll just include that in, in any of our resources that we send out. Okay. I think that would be uh, useful. Yeah, um, here's, we have a few minutes left is all, but um, a question directed to that instructor who can stand in front of students all day long and present and socialize and and uh, do that very easily, but has a hard time, whether it's turning the camera on themselves mm -hmm. and publishing that out to the social sphere or, you know, hop on a, a website, a public website somewhere and do a, a guest blog post. Like what's your advice to that person? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I, I think, you know, it's kind of funny because that was me back in the day. Like video was very um, intimidating. So I, I won't say how many takes I did to promote the video for this um, summit, but video is still, you know, really um, one of the areas that I continually have to work on as well. Um, and so my advice would be to do a little bit every day. Um, don't think that you have to be a master videographer or master collaborator with the industry or writing guest blog posts, but just taking baby steps, you know, through the process and just doing a little bit every day. I mean, I, I view your personal brand as kind of like any type of hobby or sport. You have to continually invest the time and energy to work on it. And it doesn't necessarily happen overnight, but it also takes practice. So if um, a professor, you know, wanted to kind of explore that, I would encourage them to talk to someone that they see is doing it, you know, saying, okay, what were some of the things that you learned along the way? Um, and I know for me, like approaching, you know, let's say brands, for example, I remember thinking, oh, they're on this pedestal. I'm just this, you know, educator. I have no right to talk to them about a potential brand partnership. But what I did is I, you know, talked to a few of my friends um, and kind of said, okay, do you think this is okay? And they're like, yeah, yeah, you should go for it. And so I went through various drafts, you know, and kind of critiqued myself, you know, on like, okay, if I was advising my student, what would be feedback I would be giving them if they were applying, you know, for possibly an internship or something along those lines. So I was trying to listen to my own um, advice that I was giving my students to kind of self-reflect um, on that. And so I would say, um, doing a little bit every day to, you know, continue making baby steps. Um, reach out to individuals who have done that because we're here to help. I mean, there's a huge community that are willing to, you know, help in any way I can, you know, any way we can. And then and also three, you know, just kind of 
going out there and testing, you know, and seeing, you know, what works and just seeing, you know, there's going to be some cases where people may not necessarily be responsive, but surprisingly that doesn't happen that much. And so for every, you know, like let's say five pitches that, you know, I've made up four of them have gotten back and say, yeah, this is great. You know, so it, it's, it's surprisingly really well received, you know, so that would be, that would be my advice. Okay. What's the next experiment that Karen Freeberg is going to venture down the road on? What's that next thing that that's uh, the next thing? Um, well, definitely. I, I, I still need to work on a coffee partnership, but I still, I mean, of all the things that I've done, people are like, Karen, you still are not sponsored by coffee. I'm like, I know I need to be, I need to, that is still on my list. Like I, I told myself the new decade will mark that for me. It's like this decade I will, I will work with a coffee brand. Even if I have to go up to Seattle and knock on Starbucks door and say, I'm here. Like I spent a lot of money on you guys over the years. I pretty much am powered by you guys or Duncan, you know, in the East coast. So who knows? But yeah, that's my, my next experiment. But no, I mean, I would say that the big thing that I want is to continue to advocate for educators in the marketing digital social space, because we have a lot to offer. We have so much to do. We are getting a lot of great experiences for our students. And I would say that the stereotypes that we're seeing right now, you know, still in 2020, it's still, we're, we're still experiencing um, our passe. Like we really, you know, that's my goal. My next experiment is to advocate more for our community with these brands and these industry conferences even and saying, you know what, we have a lot to do. We don't sit in our office all day. Like we have a lot to offer. And um, I think that, you know, we're getting some momentum but it's going to be a work in progress, but that's, that's kind of my next goal, you know, continuing to make sure that we all are able to get the opportunities that we want to be you know, able to be the best for our students. Awesome. All right. Last question. TikTok. It's kind of on a lot of marketers minds lately. Mm -hmm. um, are you passing on TikTok as a, as a tool for personal branding? Are you currently using it or are you still investigating? I I have it. I'm still investigating. Um, right now, most of the TikToks I have are my from my parents to Australian puppies because I think your pets are always good to kind of showcase on new platforms. Um, but no, I, I definitely think that there is a time and place. And actually, I would really strongly advocate that everyone follow Karen Sutherland actually on TikTok because she's doing some amazing things for her personal brand on TikTok. So definitely follow Karen Sutherland because she's really done some tremendous things and utilizing the platform to kind of showcase her expertise with, you know, she's like, and so she's done some really cool creative things. So everyone needs to follow Karen on TikTok. Um, she's doing amazing, but yeah, that's a huge opportunity here. So how I'm using it, um, I'm teaching two social media classes. And so we're actually working with um, the students um, for a class client. And so we're actually incorporating TikTok with them. But um, one of the things I told my students is that they wanted to do things and they, as a class, I said, it's research. I mean, definitely come in. And so for them, they're like, well, our professor actually is open to doing a TikTok. I'm like, well, it wouldn't be pretty, but I have two left feet. So it might be entertaining, but at least, yeah, I'll experiment and learn about it. So I think yeah. with every platform, that's our job is to kind of learn experiment. Sometimes, you know, it may not be the prettiest TikTok and collaborative, but hey, we're doing it. You know, we'll, we'll learn from something. So that's my approach. Great. Awesome. Well, Karen, thank you. I just want to add to... I think what the the theme that we've seen here today and you, you touched on it as well, but I really liked what you said about um, instead of preach mentor, mm -hmm. uh, the value of experiments. Um, Karen talked about um, or not, not Karen, but um, Elaine talked mm -hmm. about sandboxes, mm -hmm. creating a sandbox. So you can do those experiments and then the value of community and network yeah. um, digital marketing, communications in the social space is 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 indeed a community and um we love putting on these events we love having um educators like uh all of the presenters today to come on and share what they're doing it's stuff that uh we can't just create out of out of thin air it's mm -hmm. it's stuff that we need um you all to help us with um in bettering the community so karen thank you so much uh for being here today 
Um, well, you can jump off now. We've, we'll round this out. But uh, yeah. if you want to follow Karen, here's her email address. Her uh, socials are down uh, below at Kay Freeberg. Is that is that consistent across all platforms? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, no, I hope that everyone too gets a chance to go to ProfCon in a few months. And so that would yeah. be a great event. I'll get to network with you as well there. So absolutely. Absolutely. There we go. Awesome. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Yep.